Let's say we have a shell of mass capital M and a little mass above it labeled a little m. Little m is some distance little r from the center of the shell. We can break the shell into a bunch of little infinitesimal masses dm. And I'm going to point from each dm to my little mass m with a script vector r. The gravitational force between each dm and my little m is going to be equal to minus gm dm over script r squared in the script r hat direction. Now because this is a rotationally symmetric system, we know that the net force on this little m is going to point in the r direction towards the center of the spherical shell. So let's only think about the components of our force in that direction. In terms of this introduced angle alpha, that component is going to be minus gm dm over script r squared times cosine alpha. But what is cosine alpha? Introducing the polar coordinate theta and introducing this pink right triangle I'm showing now, we can see that the left leg of this pink triangle is going to be equal to little r minus capital R cosine theta. And so cosine alpha will be equal to that left leg r minus r cosine theta over the hypotenuse script r. Let's also rewrite dm now, which is going to be equal to the surface mass density of the shell sigma times the infinitesimal area element each dm occupies, which we'll call dA. This being a uniform shell, sigma is going to be equal to capital M divided by the surface area 4 pi r squared. And because we're using polar coordinates, dA is going to be equal to r squared sine theta d theta d phi, where phi is our azimuthal angle, which I've indicated the direction in the picture above. Let's go ahead and rewrite df out, and now we have to figure out what script r is. For clarity, let me redraw out the triangle we've been working with, and as soon as I do this, we can clearly see that we can rewrite script r with the law of cosines. And now we just have to integrate df across our entire shell. So in the theta direction, we have to range our integral from 0 to pi and for phi from 0 to 2 pi. Because there's no explicit dependence on phi in this integral, that's just going to give me an extra factor of 2 pi, which cancels nicely, meaning that we're left with this kind of gross looking integral for theta. You can either do this by hand, it will require substitution and integration by parts, or you can use an integration calculator. Either way, what you'll find is that this all reduces down to minus gmm over r squared for little r greater than capital R and zero for little r less than capital R. Or in other words, if my little mass is inside of the shell, it experiences no gravitational force. Or if my little mass is outside of the shell, then the shell is simply acting like a point mass located at its center.